Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I'm Jocelyn. We are happy to see you. Happy Wednesday morning. Happy hump day. I was late posting the link this morning. I was watching Hallmark movies again. Um, I think that's going to be a thing with me right through Christmas. Does this look like a burger? It doesn't look like a burger. It looks like three gummies in the shape of a burger. Good <laughs> morning, everybody. This person is sick today. Are you still sick? Um, yeah. Okay. I have a cold and, like, my throat hurts. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on that, right? That's something to keep an eye on these days. So she is home in her The Cozy Right, this is called the cozy or something? It's called the comfy. The comfy. She's in her the comfy. They call it the cozy. I don't know if you have the Hallmark stores near you. Remember the Hallmark stores? And now many of them are being bought by the paper store, which keeps it a Hallmark store. But they sell this amazing, long, almost floor-length, smushy, nubby-nubby, um, sweatshirty thing called the comfy. So she wears her the comfy a lot. And I'm thinking about investing in an adult the comfy because it's that good. So here's the poor little match girl straight from the bed into into the chair. You want to start saying the good mornings? Good morning <laughs> to, I don't know. Linda? Linda. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. I'm bad with names. Donna. Donna. You can read, honey. Good morning. That's a tougher Kirsten. one. Kirsten, good job. Stop it. First snowflakes are happening in Vermont already. I left too soon. Sounds like a Hallmark movie ready to happen. Good morning. Who's that? Um, Gami. That's Gami. Good morning, Gami. Gami. Oh, good morning, good morning Doreen. I'm so sorry I was late with the link this morning. You know, for some reason, ever since, um, I don't know who it was on the computer, I guess it's the app, gave me the gift of updating me again. I haven't been able to do a link a day in advance, which I used to do, and that would help me get the link up really quickly. But for some reason, ever since that fantastic gift, um, I haven't been able to use the app the same way. We'll see what happens. Good morning, Doreen from upstate New York. I I'm a Pisces too, February 28th. Um, I like the fish too because yesterday Rita was saying of these Molly Colgrove um, images we're looking at in this Hooked Rug book, the, the new one that Rug Hooking Magazine just put out, um, the art of hooked rug landscapes. Um, Rita said yesterday, oh, the, the, the landscapes are great, but you should see her three-dimensional work. And I found one example in that book that we'll look at today, but I found that one online. That one's not in the book. So I thought I would put that one up because it is fantastic. It's on a nice old piece of architectural salvage kind of sticking in there like those wooden dowel things that I sent out to people with the sugar skulls. Same idea. Great way to sort of, you, you know, use a kind of uh, country primitive thing to display a three-dimensional piece of rug hooking. Catherine, good to see you. Good morning. I think she will feel better. I was worried last night because she kept me up overnight a little bit with the sore throat, mm -hmm. but you are feeling better and you got no fever, right? <laughs> She's overwhelmed. And not a good to see you. San Francisco Bay Area, Dave is on. I was just thinking about you. I was thinking, I can't wait to visit you. I want some pizza. I want some beer. I want some coffee. I want a walk through town. That's for sure. Lots of places on the to-go list this year. It's got. I've got to get to Canada, Georgia, Wisconsin, down to Virginia. There's at least four places on the absolutely must go in the near future list. Kira is on. Good morning. You're missing your YouTube alerts. Oh, man. Oh, I miss you. And Gami says, I think, I, yeah, you bought the The Comfy the last time you were here at the Hallmark store. Yep, we thought it was called The The Cozy, but it's called The The Comfy. I don't no, think you're supposed I, I like to say. I like the cozy better. I like the cozy better too. But if I, when we googled the cozy, we couldn't find it because it's actually called the comfy. These things matter with the internet. The, the cozy. The cozy. The the cozy. Kimberly, good to see you. Hello in Ohio. Good morning. Here, you want to say bye to your to your buddies and let me get on with the show. All right. Well, you're too hot. You're like a crazy furnace on my lap. <laughs> Well, she can stay for one more minute. So I have a couple things that are interesting. We can do them all. Yes. I have a couple things that are interesting. I, you know, I was brainstorming this morning. I'm, I'm here. I was kind of waiting to see how she felt to see if I needed to take her for a test all or something. All set with my coffee. Dave is all set with his coffee. On Friday nights, he has his pizza or his, his dinner and he has a beer. He's always set. He's always set up for a good little stint of eating and drinking when we do these shows. So, 
you know, I was um, watching Hallmark movies this morning, and I got this great idea. I started thinking because um, there were some orders for the Van Gogh swatch set. So there is only one Van Gogh swatch set left um, in the store. And while I was um, putting that together, I started thinking, oh, I've been so consumed with busyness that I have forgot about the swatch sets. You going to come back later, baby? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. And I thought, okay, need a swatch set for November. No matter what, I have to kind of hit the bases with all of our great stuff that we that we do together and hopefully look forward to. And I thought, what's the theme going to be for thank, uh, Thanksgiving month, right? The American Thanksgiving month, November. And I thought, going into these holidays, now that we really are on that slippery roller coaster slope to the new year, I thought, why don't we do the theme for this for this month? Food, glorious food, name the musical, name the musical. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's going to be a good one because then I can use a lot of like um, kind of uh, gravy browns and vegetable greens, you know, cooked vegetable, mellow greens, um, squash type colors, pumpkin type colors, cranberry type colors, nice food type colors. And then it got me going. And I have no time to get myself going in these Someone kinds of ways. Someone else wants to say hi. Is it someone super cute? Oh, it is someone super... Ah, right in the lips. <laughs> someone super cute buttons the dog. Why is there a box on the trash can? Well, because I'm using it, so leave it. Buttons the dog, makes his cameo appearance. Yorkies are the nicest little dogs. I did not know I liked small dogs until we got this character. He says, hi, Gami. He always puts his ears up. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Now he thinks Gami's here. Look. It's we'll go Gami see Gami right soon. There. Yep, Gami's on, but he doesn't get it. Here, take this little, t take this little uh, Toto. Be careful. So I went down this crazy rabbit hole trying to think of, you know, I want to, I want to come up with. It's going to be an extra. I was going to say extra fat, but I do hate the word fat, even with the pH, even with myself, the way things are right now. So I thought I was going to call this swatch set the Food Glorious Food Extra Chubby November Edition for the holidays. So instead of being 25 swatches, it'll be 35 swatches, a little extra chubby. And it got me going with one of my collections, which is old cookbooks. And I know we've talked about this before. I love these old cookbooks I find in little, in little um, antique stores and old bookstores. I love the ones, particularly like this one. And, oh, hey, Anita. You have light snow on your rooftops and grass. Here it comes, London, Ontario. Yep, Kirsten too in Vermont. You know, these kinds of books, they just kill me because, you know, I'm always looking in the margins for extra recipes or pieces of paper that people put in years ago to try to copy the recipe. But I love these little recipe books because they are so sweet. Look at the art on these things. All these kinds of places. Opeti Robinson was in Isle Bizarre. In Quebec, these are, oh, this one's Delaware, French Street, Wilmington, Delaware, Winklers. And it's like, God knows if these places are still there. The art is just over the top. Uh, and it shows you each page is a different old time, you know, eatery, diner, old inn, historic inn, the Hotel Phoenix coffee shop. Don't you want to go there like this afternoon? That's a Hallmark movie right there. But it shows you one recipe from each of these great places. So what I was doing on my crazy detour this morning, this one too is very good. Guide to Distinctive Dining, recipes from famous uh, restaurants of America. This one's a little more historic, a little more pretentious, that kind of thing. But again, I'm thinking most of these are just not there anymore. Um, but there's such wonderful recipes that evoke Pappy and Jimmy's Lobster Shack that evoke, um, and that one was in, where was that? Madison Ave, Memphis, happy old times, right? So I was going through those books and then I found this guy, the Holiday Candy Cookbook. So good, so good. Even the little end papers in this, isn't that precious? Could see a design evolving just from looking at that long enough. Um, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put out for the next, from now until December 25th, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna have the next two swatch sets be food-related swatch sets, and I'm gonna name each one according to one of these recipes that I picked from these old recipe books, uh, mostly that are based, you know, in old inns that may or may not be there, and uh, 
we being from all over the world at this point, you can maybe help tell me if it's something near you, if it's still there or not, if you ever ate there, if they still have that recipe. Like Boston has Parker House, Parker House Rolls for the Parker House, which I think is now the Omni. But you know what I mean. Uh, things change. So I thought, let's do that. And then in the morning, starting tomorrow, when the swatch set dries, um, when we look at one color each morning, I can read out the recipe. And you can have your pencil ready if you want a quick, great, old-timey recipe. Won't that be fun? Maybe it'll give us some ideas for things that we want to cook over the holidays if you have the time and the will and the desire and the space and all of those things are aligned. Um, it might be inspiring to hear some recipes too during this very food-heavy time of year made it today hello lisa i love the rug you sent me earlier amazing kira says i love the old cookbooks too i was looking through my mother's she had cut out old recipes some from the 60s it is so you know this is just such a cozy time of year isn't it and i guess my goal for 2022 because it's just a cool looking year isn't it with all those twos i guess my goal is to try to quiet it down many pegs uh, get better balance going, but also try to extend that feeling of coziness through all four seasons because I feel it really powerful and strong this time of year. But I would like to feel like cozy looking through recipe books all through the year, not just at the holidays. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Joy, good to see you. Good to see you. So those that'll be coming up tomorrow. I'll be able to show you the first. Nobody said, nobody wrote down what musical food glorious food is from. And I know that you know. Um, I got another great thing in the mail that I have to share before we move on to Molly Colgrove. Jean sent a beautiful rug for the Van Gogh Challenge. Now, the Van Gogh, the information about the Van Gogh Chair Challenge is on the Ribbon Candy Hooking website, right? It's probably the last blog I did because I have been that crazy lately. Um, if you are interested in doing the chair, right, it's available as a free PDF, the drawing of the chair that I did, which is... Uh, what the challenge is about. Barbara came up with this great challenge after the Van Gogh, Designing Like Van Gogh class, and some of us have been making a chair or any kind of Van Gogh composition, and some people are sending them to me so that I can put together a live exhibit somewhere around here in southern New England. Now, I'm kind of in limbo waiting to see how many people are sending rugs um, to be able to choose the venue, because if it's a very small um, show, I have more options, don't I? But if it's a larger show, I'll go with one of the options. You know, I'm, I'm very close with a lot of historical houses and societies, so we have options. I'm just kind of in limbo waiting to see, without pressuring anybody, um, how many rugs I get in to put up, because it would be wonderful, Oliver. Good one, Rita. Um, to be continued, Rita, I'm going to show your rugs first this morning in the Molly book. Dave, sadly, so many old inns and restaurants are gone. Tunnel Barbecue in Windsor, Ontario, gone after 60 years. I used to watch the rotisserie chickens when I was a child. It is so sad, isn't it, when they drop off all these old-time places? And, you know, don't get me started, but, like, even the one in Weathersfield, you know, I was in Weathersfield the other day looking at the scarecrows on Main Street, and they had a beautiful old pub there, and it's still there, and it's still a beautiful old historic building. It's probably a 18th century building. It's just gorgeous, an old stagecoach inn, you know. Um, and it's like it used to be much cuter and much more atmospheric, and it's still the same building, and I guess all they've really done is taken down wallpaper and changed the decor a bit and painted it into kind of chic Property Brothers colors. Um, but they've also put up a lot of screens, and it's hard to look around the room and, and sort of evoke that old-time stagecoachy feeling of an atmospheric old inn when there's like a sporting event playing, right? I mean, I'm not a sports person, but I appreciate people enjoying watching sports. But just the idea that you need to look over someone's shoulder while you're eating expensive food to keep track of the game is odd. You know, that's odd. That I think should not be encouraged. Uh, but that's just the way these things are going. Susie, good to see you. So good to, good morning. Jean sent this beautiful Van Gogh rug. And I literally just took it out. And I haven't even read yet. Okay, good. So that's her address in there. Let me keep that box. This is another beauty. Yesterday we had the pleasure of looking at Joy's Van Gogh rug. Today we have the pleasure of looking at Jean's Van Gogh rug. So let me see what she put on the sticker first. Oh, okay. She wrote Van Gogh's chair at the mission right like the mission like the church along the picket wire trail 
Picket Wire Canyon in Southeast Colorado. And she says, drawn by Brett Coates, hooked by Jean Coates, wool hand dyed by Jean Coates, date completed 10-16-21. Let me first show you this phenomenal label she puts on the back. That puts labels to shame, Jean. That puts labels to shame. Now that is the mission that we're talking about. Are you ready for this? Premiering a rug. Hello. Hello. Let me stand up. I use my stomach to get the corners out a bit better. Joss, can you hold the corner of that? This? Yeah. Let's get it back a little bit. Like more like, yep. There we go. More over here a little bit. Yep. There we go. The mission along the Pick Wire Trail, Pick Wire Canyon, Southeast Colorado. Is that gorgeous? Jess, have you heard of the artist Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh? Yeah. Yeah, he's quite famous. He's very famous for his skies, his crazy sort of nebula type skies. Beautiful starry night in that, but you can clearly see the mission and the chair. The chair is at the mission. I like this very soft embedded cross in here. It's under the sort of aqueduct shape. Absolutely beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? I am so happy to see these rugs coming in. They are so, you know, they're so different from each other, but I have to say they do all, that's good, sweetie. Okay. They do all have a Van Gogh feel to them, and I think part of it is the color. This is so pretty. Let me show this close up to make sure we're in focus. These are hard chairs. These are, um, what are these called? Salon chairs or something, like for a club. I sit way back in them. So she has also done... A combination of yarn and wool strips. Absolutely fantastic and masterful. Size. Oh, that's a good one. Let me see. Chassie, can you bring me the yardstick from the other room? Uh, <laughs> the yardstick? I sneezed, and there are no Kleenexes around here. Not COVID. Some sanitizer. I'm going to not touch the rug. I'll put it down. I'll just touch my book. I don't want to scare anybody with germs. Not COVID. Just allergies in this dusty house. I kicked up a lot of dust last night doing some serious cleaning. So let me get this size for you. I will touch it again to have this size. Love the swirly sky. Catherine, let's, you got the yardstick. Did you get some sanitizer? No. Can, can you get me some hand sanitizer, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, and I will measure it for you. I will measure it for you, Catherine. I love getting these rugs because they're all so different. And I'm so happy, again, about this just a variety of... Um, um, sort of textile. I love the mix mix-ups. I love the mix-up mashups with wool strips, yarn, any kind of fibers. I love sort of going out of the box that way, particularly with Van Gogh, because he himself was so innovative and sort of cutting edge, although I'm sure he wouldn't have thought himself uh, to be that way. He really, really was. And I love these, hey Penny, I love these crossovers um, because it's so fitting with the book Hand sanitizer. I don't think I have any. Can I use your hand sanitizer? I don't know where it is. Okay, I'm just touching the rug. It's such a good crossover with hooked rug landscapes, right? Because this is what Molly is all about. I'm just going to measure the rug. Nothing bad happened, I promise. Here, squirt me. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's the huge, whoa. Okay, wait. Okay, holy mackerel. That was Ooh, like God, the some? Trevi fountain just unloaded on my lap. Thank you. All right. Holy mackerel. All right. Sorry, technical difficulties. All right, so let's measure this rug. Whew, that just that just got into every cut on my hand, which is lots of paper cuts. Uh, like wow, this is large. This is uh, 22 by 18. 22 by 18. 22 by 18. That's quite large, isn't it? What a beautiful rug. One more time. Now that my hands are clean. Absolutely gorgeous. You know, it it has the feel. I just got a moment of, um, gosh, what's the name? See, it's been two months since we did that Van Gogh class. The name of that Van Gogh painting, um, the cafe in the alleyway. I don't think that's the name of it. Some, I think it's something to do with evening or night. But it's like a cafe scene in the alleyway. And if you took the Van Gogh class, it was the class that academics and scholars um, study, the painting they study quite a bit because... It's thought that it is also a representation of the Last Supper. 
uh, all the different people dining at the different cafe tables in the alleyway. That rug just really um, reminded me of that composition. Yeah. Interesting. I guess it's the amount of bricks in it. But interesting. There's so much to be said. Um, oh, Kirsten, you'll get it done. Um, there's so much to be said about that painting because of the number of figures in it and because of the way the figures are moving in and out of the picture. It has a lot of biblical references, and we know Van Gogh was very... Uh, devout and very religious and he would have been a priest if he was allowed to continue that line of education but unfortunately because of all of his sort of protests um, and his um, uh, adversity to having the mass in Latin right because that was an upper class language uh, he was not allowed to continue with his schooling they kicked him out so interesting got distracted by a sugar skull <laughs> so you know it's so great to receive these and it's so great to look at rugs that have a very different varied look to them so let me start at the end today because rita is on and rita you are helping push the commentary and the thread along so much yesterday because you you know molly and you have you know her work you know this book i think better much better than me probably better than anybody um so i want to show your rugs first because at the end of this book is a beautiful gallery of work and two of these pieces are Rita. So let me show these first. And then we're going to pick up again in the middle of the book some of the interesting things that Molly says that I think are really helpful to anybody who's hooking, even if you're just approaching it for the first time. Cafe Terrace at Night. Absolutely, Catherine. That's the one that many people believe is Van Gogh's version of The Last Supper. And my mom says, mine is in progress. You will finish it. Took a hiatus. That's okay. There's no great rush at all. As, as, as they come in and as people... Uh, right about them and new people are finding the project. I'm really definitely looking at the new year to even start thinking about it again. So tons of time to come in uh, with an idea for the chair or for any Van Gogh composition. I'll take any if you want to see it hanging somewhere and join in that party or at least see the video of it once, once we get all that up on the walls. So first piece I want to show today is in the gallery at the end of Molly's book and it is by Rita and it is called Seaside and it is fan fantastic rita wool in mixed materials on linen designed by molly colgrove and hooked by rita hammock brighton michigan 2016 let me show you they use my rug for the gallery rug page they use two of your rugs it, it is exciting and you deserve it okay so i want to show seas seaside first there we go isn't that gorgeous that is is gorgeous now let me come in a little bit I want to show you some of the bits and pieces you see all that fanciness you see all those mixed materials in there Rita feel free to say anything you want about it oh I have to find Kim's too all right let me find that in the gallery too I want to look at yours first isn't that gorgeous so it says from Rita Molly provided a kit for class that included her needle felted rolls. Oh, did she include her needle felted rolls? Interesting. Now, by rolls, do you just mean like the um, roving that she does on her leg like that? Or do you mean she actually did like quilly type rolls that you could sew on? Um, needle felted rolls. I added all sorts of noodles from my surplus. Nylons. And I'm assuming that's like pantyhose, right? Bathing suit material nice like stretch lycra kind of a thing beads wire knitsies okay i don't know what that is that looks like an official thing wire with a capital w knit with a capital k z the letter z all one word wire knitsies wire hand dyed shibori silk and roving are included in this wonderful seaside adventure that is fantastic i'm just looking at it again Read. I see something. Where is it? Here. That is that like a plastic ring? That is. That makes me want to take a trip to like Cornwall. Can't put that on the list this year. I think we got plenty going on here. Isn't that gorgeous? That is just my favorite kind of work. It really is. Hey, Chrissy. And from Molly, Molly says, I love Rita's version of the seaside rug. Her color palette gives a, the rug a mysterious feeling, and it looks so textural, it begs to be touched. Isn't that so nice when something is tactile like that? Isn't that one of the nice things about working in this medium? 
picture yourself at a gallery or museum. Can you imagine what happens when you get close to that painting? I know what happens from taking the kids to museums when they were quite young in Amsterdam. Whew, nothing good happens when you get too close to a painting, security-wise. But our medium, working in textile, it is possible to touch, isn't it? And that is so nice to make that tactile connection to the work and to the maker. And that's the thing, isn't it? You know, when you really care about somebody and you care about someone's work, and you have that thing in your hand, touching it is an important part of the connection. You really, you know and appreciate how much work and how many hours went into that piece. And when you look at a piece, you think about the person who made it. And it's nice to be able to connect with that person by touching their piece, isn't it? That whole tactile, tactile aspect of uh, making rugs or making, making mats uh, is so important. And now there's the second one by Rita. It's called Hay Rolls. Now this makes more sense to me. I get I get the woven part there. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all that movement motion, right? Things that Molly's been talking about in this book. Balance, movement, color, contrast. Ooh. Right? These are all things. These are all aspects of composition that she talks about in great detail in this book that you must you must have so this is 12 by 10 wool and mixed materials on linen designed by molly colgrove and hooked by rita hammock from rita included in this kit from molly were molly's hand dyed spun and plied yarns along with needle felted rolls with which to make the hay rolls i added all kinds of noodles and mohair roving to create my version and molly says i love this rug so much it is an example of how to take a pattern and make it better than the original. If I can teach someone how to hook one of my patterns and then it becomes something better, it makes my heart happy. This is the best part of teaching for me. Rita took my traditional design and turned it into her own wonderful impressionistic piece of art. That is good, Rita, isn't it? That is good. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Wait a minute. I missed some... Kimberly, I love everything Molly Crove does. My rug. Kimberly, your rug is on page 108. Oh, I like this. I like, oh, uh-oh. See, I haven't even gotten to the end of the book yet. I haven't even seen these yet. Andy's rug. Oh, Lord. Wool on linen, designed and hooked by Kimberly Hurt. Because of you, E-W-E, -E, right? Because of you, Genoa, Ohio. Let me show the rug. Oh, God, Kimberly, this is like crazy. So different. So beautiful. I'm so glad that we started talking about landscapes. I've completely changed my mind about what a landscape can be. This is so different. Again, Kimberly, I love the perspective. I love looking down on the lighthouse like that. I love the diagonal, the sort of introduction of the birds coming diagonally in toward the um, lighthouse and it works so well the sort of grid on the light works so well opposite the sort of directional hooking of the water the diagonal of the birds and then the fence those are all feeding into each other so well there's such a good relationship between this grid that grid and such a good relationship between the dit dots the caps of water and the flowers dit dots such such good balance and good color, great use of the color red. Remember, somehow last week, I think it still was the landscape book by Anne, Anne Marie Littenberg, where we talked about the color red in that rug that was a gallery. And there were so many pictures in the gallery, right? I said it was like a Russian nesting doll because it was a picture with many pictures within it. And some of those pictures could have been lost if it wasn't for the fact that the woman's outfit was in red and it really pulled in the red that were in some of the pieces on the wall that she was looking at or had already walked by. Interesting, isn't it? Using red that way is so smart, Kimberly. Just, I mean, absolutely amazing. The gallery at the back is crazy. I just want to show that one more time. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic. Huge thumbs up. Oh, I'm glad I caught that comment. They use my rug from the gallery page. Yes. Yep. Kim, that is amazing. I'm just looking at your your um, thread. You're talking to each other here, making sure I'm not missing anything. Andy's rug, 25 by 36 large. That is large. Yeah, that's like a yardstick, isn't it? Glorious. Absolutely. I mean, this book is just over the top. You know, I forgot. I was going to 
Let me just remind you the event coming up with Molly Colgrove that is um, by Rug Cooking Magazine, right? Because they're the publisher here. Ampre, Ampre Press is their publisher. Uh, that live event, help me remember, what did we say yesterday? It was at 10, uh, 10 Eastern Standard Time a.m. Uh, November 6th. Is that what we said yesterday? I meant to include it in the post and then I dropped the ball when I was looking at recipe books. I'm so sorry. But let's make sure we nail that down because I want to be sure to log on for that too. Now we left off with this fantastic book. We were talking about and Rita was helping us understand how Molly is able to do s some specific uh, mixed media touches on her pieces. For example, using quilt fabric, batik fabric and hand dyed cottons that she uses as the backgrounds to her pieces and Rita says she's sewing them directly onto the backing fabric. Now this might sound difficult if you're not much of a sewer but this isn't difficult right? This is something you could easily do by cutting a paper pattern piece to fit right in the negative space of your loops where your hooking leaves off you get a paper pattern you trace it out you figure out how it fits right and then you cut your quilt fabric or your cotton fabric or whatever fabric you're sewing on with a little bit of seam allowance like half an inch quarter inch something like that and it's going to fit beautifully on there it's going to be fiddly it's going to take some fiddling but it's absolutely doable it's something that you can do i'm sure that you can do it so many new techniques in this book and then she starts to talk about for example a whole chapter on weather achieving different weather effects now we already know she's very good at this specific She's good at a lot of things, but she's excellent at showing weather, uh, snow, fog, rain, and she's showing you what she's using. For example, let me just show this piece here because it's a beautiful example of weather. It has that climped feel with those metallic threads coming down. Thank you, Anita. November 9th, 11 to 12. I was completely off. Tuesday, November 9th, 11 to 12. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Next Tuesday. Perfect. So you can see the sort of drizzle coming down here, and then she's showing us the kinds of materials that she would look for. Remember her ta talking to us yesterday about what a sort of magpie she is, going to different shops, having adventures and road trips, and picking up sort of non-traditional things with the intention of using them eventually in a rug to get her rug cooking pantry all stocked up. So she's showing you in this chapter how to do real specific effects like foggy. She's showing you this kind of very soft, almost like a um, mohair type, um, lo long, not really eyelash, but it's got like a lot of length coming off of it to do effects like foggy, right? You see that kind of pile, that kind of soft, wispy textile effect coming off of the loops. Struggling with the camera. There we go. Isn't that nice? So she's saying, you know, using something like this is going to achieve that. Incre endlessly helpful book. Endlessly helpful. And then she talks about water, um, things that are difficult um, to hook, things that, you know, are maybe not intuitive. And using her beads and things like that. Remember, she uses a lot of beads. She shows up this, this um, close-up, which is pretty crazy over the top. Talk about texture and stuff and beads and using your rug hooking pantry full of bits and bobs, right? Uh, very, very inspiring. And in chapter five, she talks about creating an atmosphere. One of the things that I absolutely love about this book, oh, I missed an important part. I'm going to have to go back. One of the many things I love about this book is that she's constantly showing us something that she, she used in the composition. Because sometimes, you know, not all of us have the kind of a brain where you say this is what it looks like and and then every person can sort of backpedal and say well I know how to do that I know what to get to get that same effect not everybody um, makes that kind of a jump particularly if you're new to working with textiles right not just rug hooking but textiles in general and not everybody comes from a yarn background or is a knitter so you see different effects happening in these rugs and you're thinking well what did she use how did that how did she get that she's showing you in this book not everybody shows you most people don't um, so it's a real gift to have her showing like the Angelina and the different kinds of yarns. This is the one I meant to show you before because it reminded me at the beginning of the book how she talks, she does a lot of storytelling, right? We were saying yesterday, having this much storytelling, personal anecdotes in a book is so important because it really holds your interest. When a book is too much on the technical side for me, I tend to flip through and look at pictures, instant picture book, right? 
um, because it's, I'm not that interested in, in that much technical talk. I'm more interested in the personal talk for myself. And Molly does a lot of personal talk. For example, um, she's talking in this chapter about how she tries to use materials, new materials each time, just to sort of stretch, um, stretch herself, use that rug hooking pantry as she goes, uh, improvise, right? And she talks about this piece that's called City in Gray. And she talks about how she, you know, she takes her road trips and she gets all, she lays out all the bounty when she gets home and looks over everything and thinks about things that she might use um, for her next project. And she says that's the way that this piece called City of Grey started. Now, I have to say, I think this is the best cityscape I've seen hooked. I absolutely love it. It has the look of a sort of mid-century British painting, right? Very limited color palette, lots of blue and yellow, lots of mid-tones, a lot of drab colors. In this case, dark light, dull bright is done in a, in a sneaky way. I'll show you close up. It's also done with white. Um, and it works well that way. She shows you a close up to show where some of the brights are. When you look into the windows, you're seeing all the colored threads, all the colored yarns that are making up the reflections of the windows. And that is working great. Creates a lot of mystery. Oh, you're so welcome, Rita. People appreciate your work. People, people adore your work. It's absolutely masterful. Rita says, when I started my abstract work wasn't, uh, when I started my abstract work wasn't appreciated in my area. I had to venture out and find my tribe. That just, that happens, doesn't it? I mean, that happens, that happens with all great people in every area. So, you know, when you have to wander outside and find your tribe, you know that you're on the right track, right? Uh, and you found them. So that's good too. Yeah. This is amazing. Amazing. This isn't exactly what I wanted to show you. Wait, this is kind of what I wanted to show you. This is what I wanted to show you. So she's talking about um, limited palette. She's talking about her cityscape. And then she moves on. This, um, this is a bit of a personal story, and it's a long one. Um, she, she moves on to say, I once attended an amazingly fun class on how to dye silk and cotton fabrics. And this is nice because, remember, she had such a bad start with teachers and trying to find the right teacher. So... I like this part. It, 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 it perked me right up because I thought, oh, this is a good experience for her, a good class experience. Uh, she says, we worked mostly outside in the summer sun, a great way to dye cotton, as it can be messy. The teacher had lovely cotton fabrics to sell, and she was also selling bags of selvage edges she thought somebody might be able to use. All cotton fabrics that had been dyed and painted right up to the edges, and she bought two bags. I took them home and drew a random line of buildings to play with this lovely new material. So she's got all her new, let me show you some of the material. I'm really having to focus it. So on top, she's got some of her dyed wools and on the bottom, some of her batiks and her, and her two bags of selvages, remember. So she takes them home and she lays out a, the, all the lovely new material. It was looking more and more like a New York City skyline as I went on. And then while I was hooking it, 9-11 happened. It changed the design and added, I changed the design and added two towers for remembrance of this devastating event. The rug was hooked at the beginning of my landscape journey. And I almost hate to read this part because it sounds like an apology. And it is not as refined as rugs. Well, I think it's very refined. I'm not even going to finish that sentence because this is a beautiful piece. And this is done. So 9-11 happened during the time she was hooking this. So she added the towers. She hooked this before the cityscape I just showed you. There we go. And she did it all with selvage edges. So remember that she likes to hook. Let me show you big first. She likes to hook very wide. And so the selvage edges would really appeal to her, wouldn't they? Very, very wide. But those nice, strong, blocky, kind of wide strips, the selvages make nice, tall buildings and nice sort of striation across the sky and the water, right, or the river. Isn't that gorgeous? No apologies for that. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop in a minute, but I wanted to show you a couple more things. Uh, that I thought were extraordinary. Um, this book is the gift that keeps on giving, so we'll we'll never get to all of it. And I'm hoping that you all ordered ordered it because it's a it's a it's a hit out of the park, truly. 
close-up of her late summer hay rolls. Rita, is this like, does that look like the kind of thing she sent you with the kits? It's almost like a little quilly piece, isn't it? And, you know, we saw this at the beginning on Monday. She would be attaching these right to the backing as well, from what I understand, or needle felting them right onto the backing, from, from what she's saying in the book, at least. It's what it sounded like. Little hay rolls. Isn't that, isn't that, I mean, it, it's just so delicious looking. It's so tasty looking. Um, I love what she does. She does a lot with cemeteries, too. You see the little headstones behind? Again, you know, I think why I often think of Wyeth when we look at this book um, is because of the colors, right? All those kind of burnt yellow colors and grays. Very Wyeth colors. If you think of Christina's world, right? The girl sitting in the field looking out. Um, very much those colors. But another close-up of the same picture, you, know, you can see with her tree trunk that she is using a lot of embedded colors. Lots of pops are embedded. And that is creating mystery and it's cre creating a glow. Um, really, really unique, different way of getting to that dark light, dull bright. Because you're not automatically seeing the bright, but when you look closer, you do. So you are registering that there are these bright purples and cobalt blues in there, but they're so deeply embedded. It really creates dimension and interest, doesn't it? Those are the hay rolls, and you made your similar. Very good. Very good. Just checking. Checking on the thread there. So um, lots of tips. Helpful tips. Just as I say that, I turn the page and a lot of helpful tips, right? Um, and again, it's so nice to read this many helpful tips because not everybody is very forthcoming with tips. A lot of artists like to keep their secrets, but Molly is not one of them. This, this book is full of great ideas. And she talks about, I want to get to a part where I think it's um, useful to see things like this, you know, where she's showing the roving and she's saying, you know, I've got the roving that's like this. And she's saying, I roll it like this with my hand on my leg to make the yarn that I will then use to hook. Right? It's much more refined, just rolling it across your leg like that. Just tips like that are extremely helpful and useful because, you know, without knowing this is how you do it, then you're, then you're on Etsy buying a four, $48 spindle or something like, right? I mean, really. So um, it's real helpful. Remember the Ruby Beholder from yesterday she told us? Lots of helpful tips. Another page of helpful tips just about the sky. Um, and more images like this to die for that have that quilted background. Almost like an applique layer, right? Absolutely gorgeous. And then the hooking beneath it. It just doesn't get any better than that, does it? It doesn't. It just doesn't. Isn't that amazing? I think that's one of her pieces, 2018, called Flying. Absolutely beautiful. I love how it's pieced out like that. Um, not this kind of piece out, like pieces, like applique pieces. Uh, the Sandman, 2002. I love this one, too. I wish this wasn't split in the center. wondering if that's in focus. See a little bit of applique there in the Sandman. And the houses are applique. Look at those beautiful dyed wools. And then she's got the background hooked. You know, when you say to yourself, what can I hook in really spotty spot dyed wools? Stuff like that. Sky like that. That's what you hook in your crazy spot dyed wools. That's why dyeing wool is so much fun. And then she talks a lot about alternative materials, a whole chapter on alternative materials, because she's obviously doing a lot of experimenting. And she talks about lovely silks like this. Sometimes these are beautiful and crisp, kind of papery, uh, sometimes called dupioni, um, tissue taffeta. There's all kinds of um, silks, raw silks, that will work great, that'll rip great, that'll give you a beautiful loop, but sometimes you need to pad them out with something under them, like a carrier that goes under them just to get a nice full loop, or you just double or triple them up or something too. But you get a lovely shine with silks, don't you? Because wool tends to absorb color and it makes a very dull flat color, but silk tends to bounce, reflect, bounce color off of it. So you get very different effects. And when you're looking for that dark light, dull bright, sometimes you get it with color, sometimes you get it with texture. Right. If you're missing like a bright and you put in a material, an alternative material like silk that has that reflective bling that can serve and act 
as your bright, right? Even if the color isn't bright. So it works that way too. And she's talking about hand dyed velveteen. Some velveteen can be dyed with wool dyes um, and some with dyes for cotton. So that really depends, right? Because if you're talking about velveteen, velveteen is a cotton fabric. So whatever you could dye, sort of anything that goes with natural fibers like cotton or wool, sometimes it's not the same thing. You have to check your dye and see if it's for cotton. Velveteen is cotton, but we also see a lot of hooking with stretch velvet and that includes a synthetic. So uh, stretch velvet, I just wanna add this bit of info, is never gonna dye with your normal dyes for wool. It's never gonna happen. So very, very different, but velveteen is a different story because that would be 100% cotton. She's talking to you about all these materials, um, so many different things to think about. Bring a cemetery to life. Gray Lady, hooked about 2014, hooked on wire armature. So in other words, something bent with wire underneath to make this shape. Probably a coat hanger would do it. I used an old Christmas tree fence. Oh, wow. For the enclosure. This was one of my cemetery rugs. Oh, wow. The tombstone lady is not particularly happy. She's trying to get out of her grave. Oh, she needs a bell. She's a dead ringer, isn't she? Look at this. Isn't that great? So that's three-dimensional. I do see these little fences and things at antique stores. You know, these little fences that go with other kinds of villages and stuff. But yeah, what a great use. I'm struggling with the camera today. I think it's because the camera is so bright where I'm sitting. That's gorgeous. That's a beautiful three-dimensional. Um, she's showing lots of different kinds of batik wrapped cording, right? So she's wrapping batik material, like quilt material, wrapping it around a cord. That looks beautiful too, kind of tying it up, tying it off as she goes. You know, when you are doing, um, when you are using these kinds of alternative materials like if you're wrapping cords with quilt fabric things like that you know it's going to become a lot thicker and harder to pull through so if you know that you're going to do a piece that involves a lot of alternative materials that have the potential to be very thick and difficult to pull through i would definitely be thinking about using linen or i'm going to say it burlap because they have much more give right they're much looser backings than for example rug warp or monk's cloth so that's something to give a thought to because you don't want to break your hook or your wrist while you're pulling through um, textured stuff, but you do want to use it. You just want to be smart about the backing that you choose. This is unbelievable. I'm going to show one more and then I'm going to get, get a move on. Another beautiful tree with the headstones underneath. And then look at these great close-ups. So she's not actually pulling the cord through. She's applying, she's applying it on top. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So that batik cord that she was just showing us, she's actually stitching it on top. That makes a lot more sense. I was thinking if she's pulling it through, that's going to be a job. <laughs> I'm not sure you can ever have too many hand-dyed yarns from Molly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and Rita says, in her tintype house, I bought some tintypes from her, but never used them. Ooh, okay, let me find the tintype house. I think that's in, in there. I love this, this piece too, Map of My Childhood. We had an episode of Coffee Time so long ago, I wish I had found this piece then, about looking at aerial maps of things and turning them into a rug design, right? This would have been like the jewel in the crown, Map of My Childhood. Isn't that great? You know, when you, this is a great way of recording a memory, doing an aerial map. And with Google Maps now, it's very easy to do that, isn't it? You can zoom right down on your old childhood home. And hey, if it looks different or it's a different color, it's not going to make any difference. The streets are probably similar, right? You can at least wiggle them in to be similar. Um, okay, okay. So this is roving, rolled into a cigar shape. So this is what I was looking for yesterday. I didn't dream it. This house with button windows. Honestly, I thought I dreamed it. Remember yesterday I said, oh, I, I'm thinking of this one picture. Oh, yeah, I'm struggling with light a little bit with the window. Button windows. And then here's the cigar shape roving. It looks like a burrito. That means I'm ready for lunch. Um, oh, yeah, so now we're seeing the haystack. So that little cigar shape was rolled up like that. That makes a lot of sense now. It's all coming together. Rita, that's your piece, isn't it? Rita, isn't that your piece again? I know it's, it's out of context, 
but it looks like it looks like it maybe I'm wrong it looks like it let's see so she does tell you how to do lessons learned she the original design for flying she does tell you how to do this stuff where she we looked at flying is using quilt fabric in the background so she's not you know it's not going to be a mystery she's going to tell you how to do it you just have to convince yourself that this is not going to be a problem for you you can do this um, super helpful here's the tin type house that I think you mean house with a bird on top this is a beaut okay so this is the one that has those little windows um, designed hooked and constructed by Molly 2010 I made a small primitive landscape with a primitive house to go along with my 3d house using more of those ancestors I made a bird wing and little winter okay so there's I see so the first one is three-dimensional the hooked house so let's look at these two the hooked house there with all the tin types in it wow struggle is real Sorry, I'm getting, I have an actual window here, not this, not like the studio, and I'm getting some light through. You see that tintype house? It's three-dimensional, and all the ancestors' tintypes in the window, all the old photographs, and then she's showing us this piece. Same idea, but this is a rug instead of being three-dimensional with the bird on top and more ancestors in the windows, and this is the one that also has the buttons in the windows, right? Four windows. Fantastic fantastic what a great idea you know that would be a great theme for people to just do this idea right with the house with the ancestors or at least include you see this a lot with like collage quilting right photo quilting um but you don't you don't often see it with rug hooking and it's it's nice to see it so so much information um in this book that it's crazy and she does take you through at the back of the book, she takes you through the technical part of a lot of what she does. For example, her sketch and then fooling around with colors on the computer. Remember how she, this is her original photo and this is the same photo but fooling around with colors. Remember how she tells you that she uses Photoshop um, to be able to play with colors and put different filters, different artist filters, for example, on there. And, you know, it really chops up it... Um, um, compartmentalizes much of your a lot of these filters break down your composition and then you have those sort of natural lines that the app will give you that an app like Photoshop or Photoshop will give you so that you're able to move forward with a design that's a bit more abstracted to work with right a bit more Rita style too, a bit more abstract more interesting right if you are not looking for a 100% photorealist piece and you are looking to abstract um, having that that information you know seeing what her process is is going to be able to help you decide is this process for me too is this something i can handle or do i need to look at something alternate or can i see another way of doing the same thing and getting to the same place so this book is a great demystifier of technical secrets it is absolutely fantastic can't recommend it highly enough i absolutely love it um and again let me say it one more time if anybody's just tuning in we said next Tuesday, November 9th, from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Go to Rug Cooking Magazine's Facebook page, um, Rug Cooking Magazine, and they will have this event there. So um, go check it out. Make sure that you do, I can't remember if it's like an interested thing or something, but m make sure that your calendar reminds you that it's coming up or put it in your phone or put it on the calendar on the wall or something because it's going to be a good event. It's going to be a big event. Um, let me catch up with the threads for the end of the show, and then I am going to sign off. Oh, okay. I think I'm caught up. It was so nice seeing you this week. And tomorrow I'm going to take off. Things have been a bit uh, touch and go for me here with kids and work and big projects and um, deadlines. So, I well, you know what? <sighs> I'm going to be finished those dies, aren't I? Tomorrow is Thursday. I'll show, I'll, I'm going to take tomorrow off um, and I'm not going to Zoom because I don't want to have to be in any one place at any one time. I'm going to see how it goes with how Joss is feeling and um, see how it goes. Today was supposed to be the first day that Teddy got picked up with the bus and I didn't have to fool around with all that crazy driving, 
But unfortunately, the bus never showed up. And when I got to the school, apparently the bus didn't show up for a lot of people. The bus just didn't come today. I know there's a driver shortage, but this is just crazy times at this point. So I'm going to see how it goes tomorrow. But I will be back with you on Friday night for cocktail night. And then I will unveil the, the start of our food, glorious food um, swatch. There's going to be a November swatch set that's that's food, glorious food, and there's going to be a December one. We're going to go right through the holidays with a little recipe each day that is um, reflecting a color in one of those two swatch sets. So that'll be super fun. We're going to do crossovers with entertaining and food starting on Friday for cocktail night. And on Friday night, we're going to be looking at a giant stack of Wall Street Journal magazines. So we're going to be going backward in time and looking at some of those, seeing some of the great projects that came out over that publication's lifetime. So I will see you then. Have a great time. In the meantime, please like the video. If you are on Facebook and you are not in our group, it is Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. Please find us there. What a friendly group we have there. The largest group in the country right now. I'm so proud and happy of everybody who's there. We are making a tweak um, though that I'm still permitting other, you know, other brands to be advertised in the group and all that stuff. I'm, I'm not against that. But I think we're going to stop doing uh, private selling in that group because there are other rug hooking buy and sell groups. And I think we're just tripping ourselves up too much with um, expectation and trouble with transactions. So we're going to change the direction of the group a little bit. It is going to remain and evolve as an inspiration information group. Um, and a friendly, welcome place for beginners to start. So I hope that we see you there. Good to see everybody. I will see you on Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for cocktail time. If you are in class tonight for a Pilgrim Hat Party, 